Hey, Jeff Kogel here, and uh, what's up, internet land? And in this video, I want to talk about how you could have taken maybe like stacks of money like this, right? $25,000, and then turned it into $100,000 uh, within a one year period 12 months 365 days and then also what that really means on what the Wall Street Journal has come out with and something I've been talking about about uh, the stock market and what's been going on and how the Dow has dropped over 10% and we're in a very interesting place in the equities market now why why am I going to talk about this is because I think this is going to impact a lot of people I know it definitely is going to impact people that are closest to me especially folks that have 401ks and retirement accounts right money in you know IRAs a 401k um, solo 401k or whatever 403B or whatever it is, some type of retirement account, you have some equities in there, it's going to impact you because you're watching that and you log into your account and then you hit the refresh button and suddenly it's like boop, 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 right? Depending on how much you got, it can be, you know, $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, $100,000 and things like that, okay? And it's quite interesting for me to watch, not in the sense of people uh, saying, oh my gosh, my, my account, my brokerage account, or my retirement account is going blown up, meaning, you know, uh, losing money. Because I hear that sometimes, right? Like, oh my gosh, I lost money. And the truth is this, okay? You don't realize a loss until you physically sell. Okay, so until you actually hit the sell button, you have not realized the loss. That's number one. Okay, but but I, I can definitely see this, and this is a conversation I've talked about uh, many times. That, that is the question is the people that are currently retired, right? The baby boomers or the Gen Xs that are about to get into retirement, right, in the next decade or something like that, right? What are they gonna do? They're gonna see this. We've seen the the stock market go at a historic highs, right? It's going fast, 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 and they're watching this. And if they don't have their portfolio protected by having insurance policies, puts, calls, or whatever it is, uh, maybe some volatility VIX stuff, right? And or it's allocated correctly, right? For the majority of it being in bonds, treasuries, equities, that kind of stuff, right? Then what are they gonna do? Are they gonna hit the sell button and realize the loss and then be like, screw it, I'm a, I wanna hold on to cash. Okay, and that's something that I've talked about since like last year, saying, oh yeah, this is gonna be interesting to watch. And so far, um, clearly, there's a sell-off going on. And matter of fact, I believe the next, we're in a very crucial trend line right now at 23,000 on the Dow. I like S&P 500 a little bit better uh, to watch, which is indicative, I think, of the economy. But we're in an interesting part. So as we go into Monday, okay, is something going to happen where on Monday it's going to be a sell-off, right? And I've even told my wife, I said, you know, what would be interesting is if it's like a, a Valentine's Day massacre or something like that, okay? Where on Valentine's Day suddenly, boom, you know, it goes down and it's now we're considered going into a bear market. All right? But regardless of where you're at, just know until you sell, you have not realized a loss. Okay, and then so the question is, what can you do with this opportunity, right? Because look, Warren Buffett says this, and many other investors says it, right? Is that be fearful when people are greedy. Be greedy when people are fearful. So again, as the news is propagating fear currently, right? Now, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. You have to get kind of start thinking, says what are some strategies I can implement, okay? So I'll tell you some things you can do, but before that, I wanna talk about that thing that I talked about, which is $25,000 investment, and how do you turn that into $100,000 in a 12 month period? And especially if you're in the real estate business, how did that apply to you? All right. Now, I decided to talk about this is because I posted a exactly this question. It says, what is it? Because, you know, this mastermind group of almost 17,000 people in the real estate space. Right. I said, there's tons of people in the real estate business. But, you know, have we taken some of our intellectual capital, things that we know about the real estate market? And then have we tried to use that competencies like sideways to make our money. So in a layman's term, what does that mean? Is that have we taken things that we already know how to do or that industry that we're in to actually make more money? Okay, and if that's the case, what if you have $25,000 and you just simply do it for 12 months, you can turn it into $100,000, right? And then we had some people answering the answering in there, right? Some, some of the interesting question was like, oh yeah, you know, what if we buy some marijuana, you know, a warehouse and grow some marijuana? We had someone that say that. Another one was joint ventures, someone said that. And there was one particular gentleman, he's gonna be the winner of the $25, uh, uh, $25 I said, what the best answer I'm gonna give is that particular person who says some type of equities, right, or stock. 
And in this one that I'm talking about is particularly is an ETF, not an ETM, but an ETF, and it's called NAIL, N-A-I-L. So for NAIL, if you bought last year in the January, okay, of uh, 2017, then it was, I believe, $26 or $25, okay, $25. And by the time, if you simply held on to that, okay, and you sold at the end of the year, 12 months later, then it would have been close to $100, okay, I think it was like $97 to be exact or something like that. So, if you put in $25,000 from your retirement account, from your personal account, doesn't really matter, right, from your brokerage account into that, and you just simply sat on it, it would have went up. Okay, now, it sounds easier, right? The most challenging stuff when it comes to the equities market is when do you exit, all right? Just like in most things, okay? It's a lot easier when you're looking back and you're just like, oh yeah, that was easy, right? Like I caught the tail end of that, okay? Tail end of that ride. Some of my friends were actually doing it from 2015, okay? Which was, I was like, damn, I'm stupid, right? And the reason why I was saying I'm stupid is that because I am in the real estate industry, I know the market very well, and then yet I'm very bullish on it, yet I didn't put money down on that ETF, nail. To me, that's just stupidity, right? If you're bullish on something, you're bullish in the industry, and you're making money on that, why are you not putting money in it, right? Why are you not doubling down? Why are you not tripling down? Now, I understand if you're bearish in the market and you're like, oh my gosh, there's about to be a huge real estate correction, then what that all means, go the complete opposite, work the other way, right? But I was bullish on it and I saw it and I wasn't doing it, right? So I was just like, damn it, I'm catching the tail end of this. Now, if you're wondering what's in that particular ETF, NAIL, right? They hold um, baskets of stocks related in the real estate industry. One of their biggest holdings is a company called DR Horton, right? If you don't know who DR Horton is, um, they're a builder. I believe the, the ETF holds, I think, like 12%, okay? And if you look at their stock, right, just that single stock alone, DR Horton, this will be kind of indicative and then tell what will happen in the real estate market too, right? It's kind of like the canary in the coal mine. I don't know if you ever, ever heard of that saying before, canary in the coal mine, is that people back in the days, right, they would be in uh, coal mines, right, and they would put a bird in there, a canary, okay? Now, why would they do that? Is because if there's some type of natural gas or something like that, that that's being released, then the canary, what happens in that cage, will quote unquote die. Okay, the canary will like sniff the gas and like, die. So if the canary dies and you're in the cold mine, then you need you need to get the beep out out of that damn place because someone that can light a cigarette or something will go kaboof and blow up. Okay, so so if you're in the real estate market and you know like something like Nail, the ETF holds like Dr. Thornton, uh, Lennar Corporation, another developer, right? Um, MVR is another one as well. I think those those are the top three holdings. Okay, is that if you look at their chart and you look back on what the market did, then literally it's the canary in the coal mine, right? Meaning that by the time I, I want to say two. 2006 came around, right? Where all the friends were telling me like, hey, my veteran investors, right? That's been second roadie. I was first time investor. I started in 2004 when I bought my first house. Um, and I was just like, dang, I'm gonna ride this market up. I'm gonna become a multi-bajillionaire on this, right? And then everyone's like, pump your brakes, Jeff, pump your brakes, slow down, slow down. We're at historic highs, right? Didn't know any better. And then guess what? Pew, right? To a point where I had to live in my car, right? That's how bad it got. But if I simply paid attention to the canary in the coal mine, right? By 2006, some of those stocks like Dior Thornton, right? They started coming down. They started coming down from 2005, started coming down. And if you're paying attention to it, you'll be like, oh, snap. And then I believe the numbers from 2006, Dior Thornton, went from $44 a share to $32 a share, okay? That was, I'm sorry, that's 2016. And then by 2006, DR Thorne was like 38 to 21, okay? And then I don't know if you guys remember um, 2007, right? Spring of 2007, New Century, if you're in this. I remember watching the news still to this day. We're watching this and there was like one of the biggest mortgage company pops up, you know, boom, trading has been stalled by, you know, New Century. I'm like, huh, what, what, what? Like I've done tons of loans on those, what? You know, and then you suddenly know, oh crap, man, things are going haywire, friends hitting you up like, I can't get my loans funded, I don't know what to do, I got tons of money in there. I'm like, dude, I don't know what's going on, right? And then things went crazy, right? And then we all know what happened, the market crashed, and then we had the best buying opportunity of, I think, my generation or my lifetime buying real estate, and simply, I was undercapitalized, I didn't know any better, and I didn't buy and hold on to the real estate, right? Probably, you know. So the point of that, me telling you this, and the reason why I'm explaining this is that, look, signs are everywhere. The question is, are you paying attention to them? And then what are you going to do? 
Okay, so as we're at this interest, uh, interesting place, kind of like a chasm or a split in the marketplace where lines are being drawn, you know, left and right, depending on if you're in the real estate market, stock market, whatever it is, people are becoming more bullish, bearish, whatever it is, people are starting to have an opinion about it. More people are starting to talk about it, okay? Matter of fact, I was at a coffee bean stuff and I hear people talking about it. I hear people watching the news or reading the newspaper like I do, talking about it, right? So as you're doing that, the question is, how can you take advantage of the opportunities? Because this is an opportunity. So I tell an individual, get educated first, and then from there, use what I like to call a drafting technique. I don't know if you have ever heard the term drafting, but my stepdad told me about this because he likes NASCAR, and um, it was many, many years ago. I don't know if he remember, remembers, but it was a car, like he's watching NASCAR, okay, going phew, 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 around in circles, and uh, I would be like, man, like that, that car's tailgating him, right? And I'm an Asian guy, and the joke is what? Asian people can't, don't know how to drive, okay? So I'm watching that, and I'm just like, why is it tailgating? And then he explained to me what drafting is, is that the car in front of him is breaking the wind, so that the car behind them is not using that the gas right as much gas because the air is broken and then they're just staying right behind them so when the time is right they're gonna go pass them up so what does that got to do with now in the real estate market equities markets you can use the drafting technique find someone that's doing something locally preferably your closest friends or people you know and then kind of shadow right behind them and then get some strategies on things that are working Okay, and then also know that even if you do miss this opportunity, whichever direction you go, okay, there's tons of other opportunities that are going to pop up. Just make sure that you're aware of what you're getting into. And then another huge advice I give people is that do not take advice from people that have a professional bias. All right, a professional bias. The same concept I've talked about in other videos that you never ask a barber if you need a haircut. Why? Because the barber is always going to tell you, dude, you need a haircut. I have simply to this day, I've never found a barber when I go up and said, hey man, do I need a haircut? And they'll go, no, nah, Jeff, I don't think you need a haircut. They always say, no, no, you, you need at least a cleanup, right? Like I always get that. So again, as we're in this uh, kind of interesting place, make sure you follow that advice. So that's what I got for you on this uh, beautiful Friday. And the winner is uh, for the group. I'm going to share this in the group. Uh, we'll notify you for that $25, and I'll make sure that to uh, get that over to you. So that's what I got. Love you guys. This is Jeff Coe. Stay out there. Be safe. Go out there and keep on uh, dominating whatever you're doing, all right? Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.